Hey guys, welcome back to Montevideo. Today I'm gonna to be going over registration and giving you guys a couple of demos on how to properly register a camera from the network onto your Montevideo NVR. Now keep in mind, registration is only necessary if you are unable to plug in a camera to the back of the NVR, uh, such as a PoE switch or something similar on a local network. As long as you guys are plugging the cameras directly into the back of the NVR, don't worry about registering them. Our systems are plug and play. So as long as you're plugging them in properly, the images will pop up on their own. This only applies for cameras that are located elsewhere on the network besides the NVR. So to get started, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna obviously plug in the proper components to make sure that you guys can search your local network and see those cameras properly. So to do this, we wanna make sure that not only are the cameras that are in the back of the NVR already plugged in and ready to go, we also want to make sure our network cable is properly connected to the network port on the back of the NVR. And then of course the other end should be plugged into the network port of your PoE switch. You could also plug it into your router. Just keep in mind that if you do use your router as the medium point between multiple sources of IP cams, it may slow down the signal simply because it has to run through your router first, which can impact some of your guys' internet speeds for other devices. So just keep in mind, it's always better to go from NVR to switch than to router. But if your guys' situation just doesn't let that happen, you can go NVR router to switch. Just make sure you're using the proper network ports on each of those devices and you guys should be good to go. All right, so once we have all of the proper network cables plugged in and we see the green and orange lights on the back of the NVR, that is the best indicator that you have everything correct. Basically, it means that the green is displaying a power signal and then the blinking orange is a data signal. So as long as both of these are running, you likely have an active connection either to your switch or to your router. I wanna briefly explain why it is so important to add the NVR cameras prior to adding the network cameras. This is because when you add a camera on your NVR, let's just say to port three, it will automatically be assigned to channel three. Port six will be channel six, so on and so forth. So if I were to bring in my network cameras first, they're going to occupy the first chronologically available channels in the system, which in this case, since I haven't added NVR cameras, is going to be one through 16. So when I add my cameras from the network and they're occupying one through 16, then I go to add in my cameras directly to the NVR, let's just say port three, because channel three is already occupied by a network camera, that signal has nowhere to go. So therefore, it's either going to do something funny like replicate a channel onto another channel, which is obviously what we don't want, or it's just going to simply deny the channel from existing on port three. Either way, you're gonna run into a bunch of problems here. So you guys wanna make sure that you're adding your NVR cameras first, make sure you can see them on the channel and that they are available to see, and then you're gonna to wanna to move into the network registration and add those cameras in second. Okay, once we have all the NVR cameras up and running on the NVR, and we have the network cable plugged in from the NVR to the PoE switch, finally, we want to add all of our cameras to the PoE switch. So we can go ahead and plug those in right now. Now here we want to make sure that we're seeing the indicator lights on the PoE switch. And there's going to be two for each channel. One will indicate that it is getting power, and then one light will indicate that it is actually getting a signal. So you want both of these lights to be active to make sure that your IP camera is going to be working just fine. So now once we have all the cameras on the switch and then we can see the cameras on the NVR, we can head over to the NVR interface. To get there, we're going to be on the live view. We're going to right click and choose main menu. Then we're going to head over to camera in the lower left corner. And then we're going to see camera list or camera registration. All right, guys, you might notice I am on what's called camera list, but yours is going to say registration. I'm on a little bit of advanced firmware that we're going to be releasing here in a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys both versions so that you're understanding what's going on. Now that we're on the registration page, I can give you guys a quick breakdown of what we're seeing. On the bottom half, it's going to show you any cameras that are already added to the NVR, whether they are plugged in to the NVR directly or coming in through the network. As you can see, all my cameras that are directly plugged into the NVR are going to show the port number that they belong to, port one through 16. And then they're also going to have 
a couple of bits of information about the cameras themselves. You'll notice that the IP address is always 10.1.1. This is a huge indicator that that camera in particular is plugged directly into the NVR. To reveal the cameras on the network, we're going to go to device search up top. Then on the upper portion of this screen, it's going to show us all of the cameras that are on the network. And as you'll notice that the IP address is slightly different. Usually we're going to get 192.168. However, it could be different on your network. It's important to note that any camera directly plugged into the NVR will always have a 10.1.1 address under the subnet of the NVR and a camera coming in from the network will have a slightly different IP address. Also, a camera coming in from the network will have the port number of 37777. Both of these are great indicators to discern which cameras are coming from where, because oftentimes this can get confusing for people. All right, so the next step after we do a device search is we need to identify which of these devices are cameras and which are cameras that we want to add. Keep in mind that other devices may show up on this device search. This includes PoE switches and other NVRs if you do have them on your network. So to identify this, scroll to the right and we can look at device type and we want to look for IP camera or it might have the model number of the camera as you see here, the IP PTZ. Okay, so once we've identified which cameras we want to add, then you're going to see either a green check mark or a red X. If this is a brand new camera freshly plugged into the switch, you're going to see a red X because that camera has not been initialized. Initializing a camera is basically giving it a username and a password so that it can sync up with your system and your NVR. So to initialize, we want to select the checkbox to the left and then we want to press initialize. You can do this one by one or you can select any camera with a red X. Again, keep in mind that you only want to select actual cameras do not initialize your PoE switch or any other NVRs if they're showing up with a red X. So here once we're initializing, it's going to give us an option of DHCP or a static IP address. DHCP is essentially a dynamic IP address that will change with the system over time. A static IP address is a set IP address that the camera will have regardless of what it's plugged into. There are benefits and cons to both. Here at Monoview, we definitely recommend setting them at static. This is because DHCP will change your camera's IP addresses over time. This will result in desynced cameras and a loss of recording and your images. Okay, so once your cameras are initialized, we're going to do another device search, and then we're gonna see they're gonna come up again, only with a green check mark this time. So now the final step is to identify those cameras put a check in the box on the left side, and then we're going to press add or add device. Once we do this, it is going to add the cameras in the next chronologically available channels, and then we're going to see them appear in the bottom half of the registration. Now, if everything goes right, this little dot on the status should go from red to green, and then you should see a live image within that channel. If everything's gone good so far, and you guys are seeing this green dot, and you guys can see an image on your screen, then you are good to go and your camera has officially been added to your NVR successfully. Now that the cameras are added, you guys can go into the encode menu or the image settings and adjust them how you guys need them to. And then you can also see them on your applications. Okay guys, that is all I've got for the registration process. So if you have run into any obstacles or if you've hit just some snags in adding your cameras or if you're not able to see them, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with this process. It isn't the easiest thing in the world. So if you guys are hitting any problems, just give our tech support a call. The guys are here Monday through Friday to give you any assistance with this or of course any other issues you might be having with your NVR system. As always, we really appreciate you guys checking this out. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you for choosing Monoview.